Hi, my name is Carrie Case, and I'm going to be a facilitator for this lecture today. Today we're going to talk about fragments, and uh, we're going to talk about what they are and how to fix them. So the first thing to remember is that a fragment is a piece of sentence. It's often made up of a group of words that may appear to be a sentence, but really only make up a fragment. And they're usually missing one of the following pieces that would classify them as complete sentences. So they have to have all three of these pieces in order to be considered a complete sentence. Now the first one is commonly the subject. Remember that in most sentences, the subject is what the sentence is about or is the doer of the action. So if the sentence is missing the subject, then unfortunately it's considered a fragment. So in our first example, brought the plans to my office, you'll notice that we don't have a doer for the verb here. We don't have anybody actually bringing the plans to the office, so therefore this is considered a fragment because it's missing the subject of the sentence. Second common mistake is the verb. Um, and, and so the, the example here is the architect to my office. So this is not always the most common uh, type of, of mistake for a fragment. Typically the subject would be a more common mistake because we make a lot of assumptions about who our subject is or what our subject is doing. But the verb uh, is often left out as well. And so in this particular sentence, we don't have whatever uh, action the architect is doing. The hardest one to, uh, uh, sorry, the next one is both the subject and the verb. So you're also missing the subject and the verb. In this particular example, the phrase to my office is a prepositional phrase. And it appears to go together, but unfortunately you'll notice it's missing both the doer and the verb. And then, of course, the hardest to pin down is a complete thought. And that's because a lot of times we think when something goes together, it's a complete thought. However, a sentence, in order to be complete, must have the subject, the verb, and the complete thought. So the example here is the architect brought. Now, typically in a simple sentence, if we have she swam or I ran, those are complete sentences with two words, subject and a verb, and they are a complete thought because we have a doer and we have the action the doer is doing. In this particular sentence, the verb requires an object. It, it needs a receiver for what's being brought. So because of that, this one's a fragment. It's missing the complete thought. So correcting a fragment, for the most part, is relatively easy. And what it boils down to is to, to fill in what's missing. Find the part that's missing and put that part into um, the sentence. So for instance, our phrase here is across the lake. This is a prepositional phrase. Do not be misled. You will notice that it's missing some pieces. So take a look at it for just a moment and decide what you think it's missing. OK, yeah, so it's missing the subject. And it happens to be missing the verb, so it's missing both things in this particular instance. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a subject and a verb for this sentence. So I swam across the lake is our subject and our verb. Now another way to eliminate a fragment is to join it to a complete sentence or sometimes several fragments together may work. And, and again, when we're dealing with just simple sentences like the first fragment that we dealt with across the lake, then that one we have to create and we have to work on that one. But a lot of times if, if our fragment is among other sentences, then we can join those sentences together to fix that fragment. So you'll notice that in this group of examples here, we have three um, what appear to be sentences. And, and the misleading thought about why these are sentences is because they all have periods. And, and we typically use a period to tell people that we're done and talking at the moment. But remember that a period doesn't make a complete sentence. We need the subject, the verb, and the complete thought to create that complete sentence. So if you look at these examples, we have in the middle of the night, I swam, and across the lake. So if you look at it for just a moment, you'll actually notice that only one of these is a complete sentence. Take a moment to look at it. So one of these is a complete sentence, and it is I swam. There's our subject. There's our verb. The verb doesn't require an object, so that one is the complete thought. You'll notice that in the middle of the night is a group of two prepositional phrases together. And you'll notice that across the lake is also a prepositional phrase. We have one complete sentence and two fragments. This is relatively easy to fix, because all we, we have to do is really just put it together. We just have to make sure to punctuate it properly. So in the middle of the night, comma, I swam across the lake. This is now my properly punctuated sentence. And you'll notice that I put three pieces into one sentence. I've saved some space and punctuation. It probably sounds like it flows a little better. So I'll read it again. In the middle of the night, 
I swam across the lake. Again, this is set up as a dependent clause, but it totally fixes our errors that we had in the previous example. So in summary, remember that a fragment is a piece of a sentence. And, and again, it, it, it may be made up of pieces that appear to go together, but it's the subject and the verb and the complete thought that make that sentence complete. We have to have all three of these pieces in order to have a complete sentence. If we do not have these three pieces, we do not have the complete sentence. And remember that probably the hardest of the three is the complete thought. Okay? Thank you very much, and I hope you've enjoyed this lecture.